you were serious about the time? Mm-hmm. Just serious. Once upon a time, two singles met online and started a podcast, The Computer Love Podcast. Let's go. We back. What's up? 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 What is up? I am Jay Reed, and I am accompanied by my beautiful co-host Shaquetta Shante. Hey yo. And we are back for episode 16 of the Computer Love Podcast, y'all. Wow. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We back. (laughs) We back like we never left. And you know we about to get into the um, church. Or no, no, no. Yeah, church announcements. Let's go ahead and get into these church announcements. My baby going to talk to y'all for a minute here. Yeah. yeah, man. Talk to you for a little bit. Just a little TT. Ain't going to stay before you long, no. <laughs> Always just saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for your continuous support. Thank you for being here, laughing with us, loving with us, learning with us all of the above so definitely you are most appreciated um i also just want to say that i know that the past you know few weeks a lot of people have just kind of going through some things even if it's like covid or adjusting to like school being back in like i think we talked about that briefly too but now that like school is in some of the students have been out because of covid so they're kind of going back virtual and people are just really looking for an outlet some time some space to themselves um vacation if you need to we definitely did oh yeah and i talked to the people about that one now definitely we had an amazing time did i tell you that your skin is like glowing right now really it's on point. Damn. Look at that complexion, y'all. Damn, go me. Thank Damn. you, baby. I appreciate you. Tell them about this vacation we went on. Yeah, we had an amazing vacation. We went to Cancun, Mexico, mm-hmm. and we did a lot of living, a lot of laughing. <laughs> I mean, for real, we did. Yes, yes, Seriously, mm-hmm. we really did. We had... Some great laughs. Some stories that some will, will stay between us. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Some things that happen in Mexico will definitely stay <laughs> in Mexico. So we definitely, um, it's always good when you can kind of get away and really enjoy each other, enjoy each other's company. Um, and that will kind of roll into like one of the chat room questions. Not even thinking about that, but Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but we'll get into that later on into it. But I just wanted to say that I like I had a ball. We had an amazing time. So, yeah, babe, we did that. I appreciate you. Fun times. Fun times. Always. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then, yeah, I'm not going to stay too long. So I am going to share um, a motivational moment. And the moment that I want to share is actually not one of my love lessons. Um, However, I do, I heard it, I saw it, I agreed with it. Um, So I saw something, it was basically saying that the most dangerous thing for a black woman is a man. The most dangerous thing for a black woman is a man. The most dangerous thing in the world for a black woman is a man. You saw it and you agreed with it. I saw it and I could see where they were coming from. So that was it. There was no, right? nothing so else. The, so th- that was the, the comment that was profound. But what uh-huh. they were talking about was they always see women having a sign that says, like, protect black women. Okay. And 
it was a black guy that was speaking about it. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, you know, for there aren't a lot of things that will get a woman like down. Like she, a woman can like carry a lot. Like she carries a lot. She's strong, Mm -hmm. but a man, Mm -hmm. like if you see anything Mm -hmm. that could kind of take a woman, like get her off her game Mm -hmm. or get her like out of character, it's a man. And so he was basically saying that, you know, not saying that a woman need to stay away from a man, but Mm -hmm. it's the type of man that a woman brings into her space Mm -hmm. um, will either, and this is my words, will either Mm -hmm. elevate her Mm -hmm. or like take her off her, like take her off her throne. Mm -hmm. And so within that, I was like, wow, it was, it was good to hear a black man Oh, say that. Oh, he. Uh, it was a black man that said that. It was that. a black man that okay. said that. And mm-hmm. he was like, and I'm saying this because I'm a black man. Mm-hmm. And he said, I I come from a black mother, mm-hmm. or, you know, come from a black father or whatever. But he was saying, luckily, he has had a good black man in his life, mm-hmm. you know, to see certain things and how he should, you know, treat a woman and, and things like that, things that a woman needs, et cetera. He saw his dad take his mama out of character? No, he said, he, luckily he saw, like, really saw him, like, cultivate her. Okay. Um, be there. But he's also seen mm-hmm. a lot of black women being taken out of character for various reasons. Yeah. Um, but what he was saying in general is um, that, Yes, the black man and the black woman should protect each other, Mm -hmm. number one. But ultimately, he was saying that when you look at the downfall of a woman, a lot of times it's not anything else besides that the type of man that she's allowed to kind of get in her space, get in her head, et cetera. Mm. So with hearing that and with seeing that, I think it just kind of stays alongside of everything I've always said is, Protect your space, protect your space, protect your peace, protect your energy. That is for men and women in general, Mm -hmm. Um, because I definitely agree with what he said. But most profoundly, what I agreed with is that a black man and a black woman should protect each other. And that is just a relationship. Yeah, well, just in relationship, mm-hmm. but just in general, like when you, I think sometimes when we do look at this, the dynamics in general mm-hmm. um, of society are like, and you're looking at just races in general, mm-hmm. you will probably see it's it's a lot of like we don't protect each other as much as other races may protect them, like sure. their yeah, you yeah, know yeah. their races. Yeah. Um, so just hearing what he's saying, I why well, do you think that is? I, I just think that it's is deeper than mm-hmm. it's just something that they were taught to do. I think mm-hmm. it probably goes back to like slavery and mm-hmm. having to, you know, f- fight to live and, mm-hmm. and having to, you know, find protection within themselves. I, I don't think it's like, I mean, the, you know, I mean, black men were purpose, purposefully um, emasculated in front of their yeah. family. So, I mean, it was it was they tried to separate them so yeah yeah absolutely. i think it definitely goes you know that deep um but i do think that at some point we have mm-hmm. to change we have to change the narrative and we have to make a decision to say you know i'm going to protect my family mm-hmm. uh, and, and it starts with your own family you know yeah. it starts with it starts with your your mother it starts with your father it starts with your children it starts you know with your wife it starts with your husband it starts with literally like I've always been to type to feel like you fight the world on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to fight the person that you're with as well. Um, You people are often misunderstood Mm -hmm. by strangers. So to come home and be misunderstood Mm -hmm. by the person that you're supposed to find comfort and peace in Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's no bueno. That's no bueno. So protect, protect <laughs> ourselves, protect each other, protect black women, protect black men, protect just that. I think that's, that's it right there. <laughs> protect. If you can get a big sign that says like protection, protect one another. 
And um, I think we'll be better off, literally. Yeah. If we if we look at it like just not about myself, not mm-hmm. just about you, but like if you ever stop and thought like how your actions are um, either helping or hurting other people, you may mm-hmm. be more you may be more conscious or give more thought into how you move, how you speak, how you do things. If yeah. you just kind of look outside of yourself. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think that's a, a powerful movement. Um, protect one another. And in, in the process of, of protecting one another at a minimum, um, that will, um, proliferate people to, um, not harm. Harm. Yeah. Yeah. So. For sure. Yeah, no, I think that is amazing. So that was your your thought of the day? Thought of the day. Let's go into the chat, chat. room. Chat room. So this chat room question is, like I told you, it kind of <laughs> went with, I didn't even realize that we were going. I was going to tell about our vacation and stuff. Um, but it's perfect because it kind of rolls into the chat room question. And that is, should I plan, should I plan a staycation for my lover? Um, we want to travel, but can't right now. Due to various reasons from COVID-19, work schedules, what or would you suggest a staycation? Why or why not? <laughs> would I recommend a staycation for you and your lover? <laughs> it sounds like you got a wife at home. Right, <laughs> right. You're trying to like, should I do this while, you know, we got COVID it going on? It does like that. <laughs> but I, um, from my understanding, from reading this, you and your lover, they huh? are a couple, uh-huh. like, <laughs> Maybe married because they said, you know, they have children together. Yeah, so that's how we refer to our girlfriend. Right, <laughs> my lover. <laughs> when I introduce you, I'm introduce you as my, my lover. This is Shaquetta. She's my lover. <laughs> this is my lover. <laughs> Actually, um, I like a lover now. Like that, that. We can maybe, maybe we can start something. Make a little lover. Hey, lover. <laughs> That's my lover right there. <laughs> Who is she to you? That's my lover. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, would I recommend a staycation? Of course, I'd recommend a staycation. Like, why wouldn't I recommend a staycation? Um, I. I guess I guess maybe it it gets, it gets looked down upon because you're not really going anywhere, um, and uh, you only yeah. really value if you have to take a plane to go somewhere. But like here in Charleston, um, this would be the perfect place to, to take a staycation, a staycation um, and especially sure. like in a place like this, um, a lot of people live in um, locations where there's a lot to see and a lot to do, mm-hmm. um, but you live there, so you don't really ever take the opportunity Mm -hmm. because it's just there. So you're you're like, I'll I'll always have the opportunity. Um, So a place like Charleston, um, there's really nice, you know, four, four star hotel. How high did the stars go? Four or five? Five. Five. So there's really nice five star hotels downtown Charleston. Um, Yeah, we could take a staycation on there um, because we may never get the opportunity or we may never even think to visit, you know, Charleston Mm -hmm. and and see the sites and things like that. So um, yeah, take advantage of it. Um, connect grow yeah absolutely i think so so i'm actually i'm really glad that they asked that question um simply because i think that sometimes one party (laughs) in the relationship Mm -hmm. can even see it as like i'm not about to we're not about to waste no money for no hotel in our houses (laughs) like you know 10 minutes away or 20 minutes away we can sightsee and come back home (laughs) (laughs) so i think that when you have someone that is looking at like the budget Uh or looking at different things like you know just i guess in their mind being logical as they would call it you know then i i think so i a hundred percent think it is okay to plan a staycation um there are so many so many times like if you are in uh charleston or charlotte Mm -hmm. or um atlanta or raleigh wherever you are sometimes there are a lot of places in your city or in your area that you haven't even had a chance to explore so you absolutely should take a weekend and really just you know plan it out say you come up with um an itinerary to say like if you're in charleston that's you right there she she the itinerary planner everything gonna be okay (laughs) go ahead (laughs) 
I'm just saying, uh -huh. especially if it's a staycation, then you don't want to just end up doing the same thing that you, right. you know, okay, we're going to run by them all. Right. Like, but if you're going to do, if you're going to do a staycation, I would definitely suggest like, you know, researching mm -hmm. new developments, new things that have, you know, new restaurants or blacked on restaurants, blacked on they have a lot of these like selfie museums that are happening now. Just so many different options that you can have. Like mm -hmm. literally like make it fun, make it entertaining, make it fun for your partner, um, make it fun for yourselves and drop the kids off to the sitter as you normally would have. But what about the people that, I mean, cause that is a good point. Like we got a house right here that we're paying the mortgage on. What the hell do we need to go and get in a, uh, a hotel? Well, I think that sometimes you need to get out of, mm -hmm that space you know um you need the idea of feeling like just getting away you're getting away yeah. so yes you should create yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. create something create that environment it's kind of like like as as kids it was always fun to to spend the night at your like your cousin's house or your best friend's yeah. house even though you're there all the time all the time right. it's just fun to just go you spend still the get night excited. <laughs> right. like what so my just look at it. a staycation is like, you know, spending a night <laughs> yeah. for, for adults. Yeah. Is, is basically and what even it is. if it's one night, y'all yeah, don't exactly. have to spend two nights. Like literally if it's, you know, you got home from work Friday, mm -hmm. then on Saturday, y'all will, you know, so we'll start fresh. We'll go start, you know, with breakfast at a new spot that we haven't tried. Yeah sightsee go get checked in if it's summertime bring your swimsuits your swimming trunks you know literally go to just enjoy a lot of times we don't go to like kiowa here a lot you don't go to, to kiowa all the time yeah. or so like drive out further in the area that you have not explored in and yeah. then come back in so yeah do it do it girl yeah. do it i'm here <laughs> for it and, and if it is if you have someone that is kind of like What's the point? Mm -hmm. You need the itinerary. Go ahead and bill it out <laughs> so you can times, show them. If, if you're at, at home, um, like you go out, have fun, you come back home. If you try to make your staycation, you're going to want to like clean up or. Yeah, do like you're going like, to find something yeah, to exactly. do. Exactly. So, so yeah. yeah. I get out there, you can make a mess it. in a hotel and just, yeah, it's like like spending a night for, for adults. Yeah. like I'm here right. for it. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, a uh, staycations in the near yeah. future for us. Yes, do it. I'm ready. Pop, 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 Wedding vows. Wedding vows. What are they? And are they important? What are they? Um, mm -hmm. Well... They are, they are, they're your promise, your promise to your partner um, of your, your commitment and your position moving forward in this life together. Um, it's basically, it's, it's your promise. Um, what am I going to do for you? What man am I going to be? Um, yeah, that's what the vows are. What was the second part of the question? Do you think it's important? Do I think they're important? Um... <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I think that weddings are are um, performative anyways. Okay. Um, so is it important? Yeah, the, 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 in theory, it is important. Mm -hmm. um, the philosophy is, is important. Um, the things that you say, are, the promises mm -hmm. that you make are important. But um, I don't think that they hold any more weight because you say them in this form you know, at this at this certain time, I think a lot of times during weddings, you're really trying to to make it poetic and just you know make it sound good and just you know make it something make make it good. Um, also, you also you want to make it meaningful, but you want to make it good. But I can I can tell you my prom my vows, you know, um, right now um, in private, and it should be just as important. Absolutely. Um, so uh, just. Me, because this is just the type of personality I have. Um, I think weddings are performative. I think <laughs> weddings are to make the woman happy, um, and it's just one of the things that uh, that every every girl dreams of having her wedding. So uh, I'm here for it. You know, I support it. Um, but uh, it's, it's it's for you, babe. And uh, I'm I'm gonna come up with my vows, and I'm gonna make them as poetic as I possibly can, hey, you know, and, and meaningful. You gotta make it poetic but, uh, for me. But uh, yeah. The vows that I make um, definitely intend to stand by those. So, 
I do think they're important. Okay. So I think that you said a lot of like good things in reference to um in reference to the importance behind it and if you say it in public versus private, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it a hundred percent holds value mm-hmm. and weight regardless of when you say it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have two perspectives on it in reference to when it's done in public at a wedding mm-hmm. and why. Um, when you're doing it in public and you're doing it in front of people, I don't see it as being like as a performance, mm-hmm. but as you're saying it in front of people that are going to be a witness to it mm-hmm. and are going to help hold you all accountable. Mm. And this is the vows that we're making, not only in front of God, but in front of these people that we have chosen to be here with us on today. I got you. Um, That makes sense. You know, and if we're not, if, if, and this is my true Mm. intent, um, I have never been married. And one of the reasons why I've always been strict and strong on waiting Mm for that opportune time and the time, the correct time is that I don't want a performance. I don't want, because I think there's multiple opportunities to like, you know, mm-hmm. put on a performance. And don't <laughs> get me, I'm not saying that a performative th- that is wrong for being, yeah, or yeah, bad no. be, being performative. A lot of things are performative, um, but you no, have, a, you have an saying. audience. So obviously it ha- needs to be some level it of It needs to be some type of, yeah, I got you. <laughs> right. But what I'm saying is, for me and mm. looking at it, it's not about like how I'm saying or what I'm saying, but the people that, cause I'm being on protecting my peace. So I don't want anybody to my wedding mm. that does not truly want us to succeed, mm. want us to be happy, mm-hmm. want us to have longevity mm-hmm. and that the people that are there that in those moments, if they would see or hear or know of anything, that they will be people that will remind us mm-hmm. of the vows that we took, the vows that we said, and the vows that we, you know, set forth. Mm-hmm. Now, on the side, on the my other perspective mm-hmm. is that I believe that vows should take place well before you get married. Mm-hmm. I think that there should be vows in relationships. Okay. Um, I believe that, yes, when you are getting married, you have a different set of vows that this is what I'm going to do as your wife, as your husband. I vow to do these things. However, I also feel like in a relationship, you should also have commitment. You should also have things that you are going to do because if you don't, then y'all not going to get to the altar. (laughs) Like, you know, you, you want, see, I think a lot of times if it's not happened in a relationship, you have this false expectation that something is going to change mm-hmm. once you say I do. Just because we sat here and we mm-hmm. said I do, now it's going to be like, well, you my husband now, so you got to do these things. <laughs> you my wife now, you right. have to do these things. That's not how it works. It mm-hmm. has to start well before then. Mm-hmm. Yes, a vow, you should definitely have like different marriage vows than you do in a relationship but i 100 percent believe that it is worth sitting down in a relationship to saying like these are the things that i promise that mm-hmm. i will do and care for and even in the moments that it's hard for me to do it mm-hmm. i will look at myself and whatever 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 yeah. those vows are yeah. whatever that commitment that promises i think it starts well before you get to the altar so like <laughs> at the wedding when, when you're doing your vows i'm <laughs> like hey y'all heard what she said now right yeah <laughs> y'all heard that third vow hey, well, that. Listen, <laughs> y'all better hold but her that's that. what it's supposed to be yeah. like okay. even when you're going um and you know i've been in mm-hmm. i've been in 20 plus weddings so i i know like yeah. <laughs> what they're saying like what the officiant is saying and mm-hmm. Yes, they will say like you are taking this vow and mm-hmm. so if you if you say it in front of two people if you choose not to have anybody but your mom and your dad there Mm. or your best friend, whoever, however Mm. you decide, those are your witnesses. Mm. Those are the people that should be holding you accountable. Yeah. I never looked at it like that. That's, that's a different perspective, but it makes a lot of sense. That's, that's, 
I'm telling you, I'm, I'm big <laughs> on that. I'm just like, if you just come in for a show, yeah. if you just come in because you want to see how nice of a, a wedding someone mm. has or to see how good their food was or mm. was not or to get a good couple drinks and dance and whatever the case may be. You're going to get all that. Yeah, yeah you, you get that and you'll walk away with it. But right. you should also walk away saying that, you know what, like this is a couple that mm-hmm. I can see the love and I can feel the love in, and I'm going to be here on their journey. Like mm-hmm. that's not, I'm going to, I want to know all the intricate details of their relationship, mm-hmm. but I'm going to pray for y'all. I'm mm-hmm. going to like literally uphold you all like mm. in in prayer that y'all will be covered y'all will be protected y'all will have the finances to cover your household that you won't struggle mm. that you will be the head and not the tail that you will be ahead and not behind like mm. i can go on now <laughs> i'm ready okay <laughs> <laughs> let's go all right, Shoot. Yeah. but yeah no i mean we're talking about yeah vows that, that definitely makes a, a lot of sense for sure so. How I feel about it, you All know. Right. So I think we beat that good. <laughs> <laughs> closing question. Uh, closing question. Yeah, and I think the closing question is going to. Closing question. If you mm-hmm. won the lottery, Ooh. I really want to win the lottery too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is the first thing you would buy and why? How much money do I win? Let's just go ahead and say you won like a million. One, just one million dollars? Just, just one million. Just one million dollars. First thing I would buy. Um, well, I mean, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to talk to a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. But... I know the first thing that just where my mind is at, mm-hmm. if I were to get a million dollars, you see so many people, they, they win the lottery and then they end up going broke. Broke. Yeah, and, absolutely. And I, I just never understood that concept. You give me a million, I will never be broke again. Not a millionaire <laughs> ever again. If I, you gave me $1 million, if you gave me a million dollars, I would be a millionaire for the rest of my life. Right, There's absolutely. no way I, I would squander that. Um, I would, whether it's real estate um, a business, um, but I'm really leaning towards real estate. Um, it, it just seems like that the safest, the safest best, the bet, um, income producing. But I, I would buy an asset that's gonna set Absolutely. me up for life. Um, to where, regardless of what happens, I have this asset that's gonna pay me enough to where I can just live. Um, so yeah, uh, I would definitely buy some type of asset, probably real estate, that's going to to pay me that I can live off of. Yeah. I love it. So. Mine is actually the same thing. Um, I would actually buy like an apartment building. I would probably do an apartment building and um, or if I could do either apartment building or I would do multi, like a few, um, like multifamily homes pretty much. Like like so duplexes, duplexes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would buy that and I would probably buy like multiple Mm -hmm. and to have like some in my nephew's name, like in my niece Mm -hmm. and nephew to kind of give them something to, I've already had children, Mm -hmm. children's name to, to give them something in their name that's creating residual income for them early on for sure. So yeah, that's how I would do that. Mo money, mo money, mo money. Breaking cycles, creating (laughs) new ones and showing, you know, legacy basically. Like legacy, longevity, and financial wealth. The goal would be for for a million dollars. Like I don't know if I'm even just thinking small, but um, my goal personally would be to to have uh, an asset paying at least ten thousand a month. I mean, if you can get an asset, whether it's apartment or um, just anything really, like you can buy buy a set of properties and Airbnb them out, or there's just so many ways. Mm-hmm things you can do with a million do, dollars yeah you know? that's i'm like um all i need is one for real like just give me one right. and we can make that for sure flip it continually like bringing in multi multiple multiple millions for sure all right so we are going to play a little game of this or that you ready i'm ready for that this or that um 
So these are kind of a. Uh, oh no! What was that one that I was I was thinking that I said before the the show? Um, the race one. Yeah. What was the question? If you could be any race. Oh, that was a question. That was a question. Did you tell me this question? The question was, um, if you could change your race, would you and what would you change it to and why? Yeah, that was that was one of your questions. Oh. But that was one that I think you were. We were one of the hypotheticals. Yeah. Um, nah, I'm good, shorty. I ain't changing. I don't want no. I'm good right here <laughs> with this melanin. I'm enjoying my. No, no, wouldn't change a thing. Honestly, my I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm good. Why? Because it's so like the diversity of a black woman, like the mm. things that we can do. Talk from, to me now. Tell me about it. From our hair, like mm. <laughs> who can like your hair can be curly, kinky, mm -hmm. coily, afro mm -hmm. to curly the curl pattern, just rubbing your fingers through the curl, and they naturally come down and bounce up. Mm -hmm. To deciding to go and get it washed, pre like blow dried. I'm not talking about chemicals. Mm -hmm. The chemical was a thing of that was an option as well. Yeah. But I was talking about the natural black hair of mm. a black woman okay mm -hmm. so just blowing that thing out and you can just take just straighten it if you would like oh it's a throwing braids in it as i have chosen to do now okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying from the hair to the skin tones mm -hmm. just like the the variety it's like a box of chocolate. You open it, you never know what <laughs> you're going to get. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So you got. What kind are you? I mean, you know, I'm like a little butter pecan, saying a little caramel. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm just saying. I, I think you just, a, just a, a nice milk chocolate. <laughs> a little milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. But no, seriously, I mm. like literally love being a black woman, um, being of black descent in general, African-American. And yeah, there was a lot of history behind it. There's a lot of um, pain behind mm. it. There's a lot of like struggle behind it. Mm. And I guess hearing some of the things that not only like parents and grandparents had to endure, like my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, he was 95 when he passed. He had seen a lot. Yeah, a whole lot. Yeah. Um, my maternal grandfather is still alive, and he's you know eighty seven. So the things that they have seen, yeah. endured, and to know the things that they did, so we can be here right. and and live a certain lifestyle. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change that. You country. think it's more difficult? You think that you would have had an easier, easier go at life if you were a different race? Um, I, I wouldn't want to find out. I'm sure that. I mean, if you look at a, a Caucasian, you know, some Caucasian races or, you know, whatever, they will say that, yeah, you probably, they probably would have it different. But I, I also know that there are some, um, there's also some African-Americans that they would, you know, disagree to say that they've had it mm -hmm. pretty easy. Like, you know, yeah. they, they were born into wealth or, you know, they were born into whatever, mm -hmm. however it was. But I... I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to just always have had it easy okay. because it has built so much character, mm. um, personality, um, flexibility, mm. adaptability, just being able to like, I think if you put, you know, and not any black person, but if you put the majority, um, if you put somebody in a room with other, mm. like we can work a room. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can, uh -huh. you can work a room. It's just like a, a presence. It's a confidence. It's a just. You're talking about black women here? I'm just talking there. Just being like black in general. Oh, okay. Like I'm just, uh -huh. you, you know, actually why I wouldn't want to be another race. <laughs> and I'm just giving you multiple reasons. When I see we come with a certain style, uh -huh. we come with like now, our are, own Are you style. saying that all black people are a monolith? Because I'm sure not every black person that walks into a room is just going to no, light it up. But the and, and they probably have not or mm -hmm. don't because they haven't tapped into it yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, I'm so, serious. So you don't, you don't think there's any like just 
low energy black people that absolutely but what i'm saying but a, a room. but a lot of uh-huh. them are probably saying or have said mm-hmm. that it's not because they don't want to it's mm-hmm. just because they don't know how to or it's not their personality they mm-hmm. have like they're kind of more introverted but right. the thing about it is when you walk into a room you don't have to like light it up by saying something mm-hmm. You can light it up just by being there, just mm. by like a subtle smile. Your smile can light up a room. Mm. It doesn't have to be something that you've done or, or said or something that you wore mm. that speaks for you. It can literally just being that yeah. favor on you. Okay. I'm here for it. That's beautiful, babe. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so I think your answer was not only no, but hell no. <laughs> 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 like I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the, the long, the long and short of my answer is that I, I'm good too. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I am. That's funny. Um, and I, I think you know, most people with any level of of self worth and self respect and self confidence mm-hmm. is gonna is gonna say that they're good the way they are. You know, um, yeah. Because we don't know <laughs> any anything else. Um, but uh, I, just just being honest, um, I mean, my upbringing was different than, than your upbringing. Um, so there were stages in my life where um, I was very confused. He was you right. Know, I, I didn't right. Know, I didn't know um, what was good, what was bad. Um, from like as early as I can remember till about the age of twelve, I was raised by my grandmother mm-hmm. and my stepfather. Stepfather being a white man, um, white man from from the south. Um, great guy uh ra- raised us raised us well um however i was <laughs> confused as to what the hell i was you know um um i i never considered myself black back then um i didn't even know like because you see black i always thought that i was like tan or brown right or, right, right. right right so they right. say what color are you i'll say tan um or brown yeah or, yeah or, or like right, that right, right like, what are right. you um so, so i was confused and then obviously Growing up in this household, I'm not seeing black characters and black Absolutely. figures. Mm-hmm. I'm not watching black TV shows and things like that. I'm seeing, you know, um, blonde Bud- uh-huh. Budweiser uh-huh. girls uh-huh. And, and things uh-huh. like that. So that's what I'm seeing. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely had and I went to schools with a lot of white people. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I was definitely it, it gave me a level of insecurity about my features. And mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. And I was like, why can't I have straight hair and why do I have to look different? So, right, right. Um, so if you'd have asked me back then, um, like in my t- uh, growing up to 12 years old, I probably, probably been would like, have. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And then from the age of 12, I went to go live with my father who's black um and his um, fiance and, and their kids um so i went and i lived moved into an all black all family, black family uh-huh. um, went to a, a predominantly black school um so culture just changed and this is where i learned um more of i kind of kind of grew into myself during the, these are my developmental years absolutely you know? um, yeah so i grew into myself um i kind of form the things that I like, the things that I don't like. Um, and it, it's just, it just seemed it's, it's my face where now I will say that, um, I mean, just in general, a black people, black people in general are just very welcome, open and accepting, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. however, um, there, there was like, you know, I'm always like the Chinese guy or, oh, yeah, the, you know, sure, <laughs> sure. all, all that shit, you know, going to a, to, a, to an all black school or, you know, they're, touching my hair my, my hair i go home every day with my hair damn messed up because you know girls want to pull, pull on your hair like what, what, what you got in your juices and berries in your hair <laughs> whatever yeah um but um no that's uh so that's where i, I kind of grew into myself and and, and black culture in, in general um and just developed from there so um that's what made me the man that right, i am today no, the right, uh, right. korean and black uh man that sits here today and uh yeah no i i i Definitely am happy now with what I am. Ooh, um, yeah, for sure. I know. Uh, being black and Asian, um, I don't know if it's the same for all black and Asians. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's not. Obviously, I'm not going to speak for all of them. But for me, it was like um, you just never really like, like I, I, yes, you know, with black people, that's where where, where I fit in. You know, uh-huh, like with Korean uh-huh. people, I'm definitely an outsider. You know, right, right, I, I right. went to Korea, and you know, while they're very loving, open people too, but nowhere near as like accepting and you know as, as, as yeah. black people. Um, especially like uh, if I were to like walk up to a group of Koreans here, <laughs> they would definitely look at me like I was an outsider. Right, right, you know, right, right. where if I was to walk up to a group of black people, you know, it would be all good. Um, so uh, 
I don't know where I was going with that, but but yeah. I, I just thinking to to your point too, mm-hmm. like in all you know cultures and in, in, in African Americans, because I I think like even now. Mm-hmm. It's like they will be like, oh, can I, you know, your hair? Right. Like, I think the diversity of just like how yeah. your hair, yeah. like, as a, a Man, I wish, you know, I wish, you know, they could <laughs> do that still- now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's probably why I don't have it anymore because of that. They say people, that people play in your hair. Funny. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, they do like, can I touch it? Yeah. All right. So just even still now, like, other cultures or other races will be like you know if a black you know person here is like curly curly yeah. or if it's in like the afro yeah. can i touch it you know can <laughs> I've i i've never see? i've never been compelled to want to touch anybody's hair Here, I know, right? like That's i've n- never like saw whether it was whether it looked interesting or not i've never been compelled like, i want to like, touch it i want to touch your yeah, hair yeah like no. it just seems touchable <laughs> right it's like i don't know <laughs> oh yeah but uh yeah no i, I definitely definitely went through that it's not like I mean, it was always girls who wanted to do it, so oh, yeah, it wasn't course. really. My nephew goes through that now, <laughs> like, and his hair is just like soft, like you know, yeah. like oh, can I touch your hair or yeah. you know whatever. So it's definitely like, a, maybe yeah. I'm, I think in general, it's a probably a female yeah. thing, but I've never been a person even to like want to touch somebody's mm. hair because I. I what am I touching? Am I seeing it like I'm Well, you're not. a germaphobe anyway, no, so you're I'm like not. with the hand center. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like you probably got like lice like, or wait, something. Like, in there. like I'm not touching it. No, right. that's funny. That was good though. It was good, babe. Good show. Good show. And we are out, y'all. Thank you for watching. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe. Follow us on IG at Computer Love Podcast, and we are out.